Just another day. We don't have a cold open, do we? Let me think of one. I cover you in ice. <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> Delivered. <laughs> Watch fam, I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Michael. This video is sponsored by Stamps.com, aka it's just it's the one of the greatest companies you could possibly use, uh, you know, if you own a small business. Period. End. Period. End. Um, more on them later. Yes. Um, okay. So today we're talking, and, and you put together today's episode, and it's a really interesting episode. You said really for for core audience, core people audience. that are sick of the Rolex chat, the this chat, the that chat. Yes. Um, and again, please pardon us with that. Sometimes, I mean, we love Rolex. We want to talk about the market a lot, um, but we have other interests as well. But yes. really, YouTube rewards when you have the word Rolex in your title. So, uh, if we, so if we don't put the word Rolex in our title, if we don't touch Rolex on an episode, we couldn't have a viable business. So I, I appreciate your yes. your patience. Um, and we really do, do try to make the conversations engaging and interesting. So there you go. Yes. Okay. So today we're talking about a couple of things, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I think that the, the first thing we're going to talk about is one of the biggest... That just lies. It's kind of misleading. One of the darkest kind of secrets of the luxury watch world. The, the point of the luxury watch world where it gets a little used car salesy. Yes. All of a sudden. Be, and, and the true story is so much more interesting and so much so more much, And there's so much potential. Exactly. But yes. albeit it is, uh, rather, it is difficult to market. It yes. is a difficult story to market. Yes. Uh, so we're talking about that. And that, that's in respect to you know, AP, Paddock, uh, uh, Vacheron, DC. Constantin. The Holy all Trinity. Yeah. Holy Trinity. Second subject is a bunch of different space watches, space and moon. One used as a hammer. One was a hammer and one was a Rolex. And I actually had no idea. Yes. No, I really didn't either. And it's one of those things we talked about where it's like, Oh yeah, right. Like NASA is not; those guys aren't NASA. They're just dudes that went on the moon. Yes, I'm, like, I'm bringing my watch with me. Yes, you know, there's a big difference between you know NASA sponsored watches, commissioned watches, and then what the guys themselves. A guy that's like, bring. hey, I'm going to the moon. Like I'm bringing my watch. He's just happy to get away from his watch. <laughs> She's like, you could die. And he's like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's get into the first topic. Oh, there's also one watch that you've never seen before. Guaranteed. Oh, I had never sure. seen it before either. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Caliber 920? By who? JLC. Is that what it's called? Yeah. No. That's a, you probably know. You yeah. probably know of it. I didn't know that it was called the Caliber 920. No. The thinnest automatic full rotor movement ever, still wow. to this day, because the full rotor, everything yep. else that's super thin is a micro rotor, was the only movement used. And there's, there's probably some super niche special edition something I don't know about, but the only movement used in every used by the Holy Trinity. Same movement. Interesting. 920. Used by AP, used by Paddock, and used by Vacheron. Really? Yes. How on interesting. All of their most famous models. If I was, if I were JLC, that's the first one of the first things I would do would be in every JLC showcase there should be a larger version of that movement. Oh so yeah. So that that's a point of storytelling to everyone. This is considered really the greatest movement of all time. That every is... juggernaut in the watch world, yeah, if, right. if you're picturing the three gods sitting there, right. they all use the same movement wow. on their flagship And it models. was a JLC. Yeah. But the that's old... why it was called the Watchmaker's Watch. Exactly. Right. Watchmaker's... Was it Watchmaker's... Oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was actually the Watchmaker's Watchmaker. Yes. Rather. Which we thought meant Watchmaker's War JLC. Which is also true. Which is true. Because it was more affordable. But yes, it, they actually were making the watches for the guys that made the watches. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll tell you a little bit about this. Uh, like I said, ultra thin automatic movement, considered a masterpiece. And it's really, what's funny is we'll get into the watch that I want to show you later. It's all the same philosophy, which we were talking about, which is brands for a very long time. The most esteemed watch brands in the world outsource things yeah like jlc is not eta but right. eta has, does essentially what jlc does as well right. they sell movements at different levels yes and then bigger brands basically every brand at some point buys that watch or buys that movement they finish it how they want yep. they change things in and out but oh, yeah. the actual skeleton comes from other brands yeah a lot of people think that brands who use right movements from other brands are you know cheap they're affordable right but it's couldn't yeah. be you couldn't be further from the truth Patek Philippe in their top of the line watch the perpetual calendar chronograph mm -hmm. um, used a Lamania based 
movement forever uh, yeah. up until the 5970 which is probably one of my favorite references of all time yeah um and then 5270 which i think is an inferior watch i don't like it as much mm -hmm. but that watch was the first you know in-house you know paddock yeah. uh perpetual counter chronograph yeah. um but but there was nothing wrong with that they're, they're taking the blueprint from someone else and they are you know they're executing in a masterful fashion you and know? You, you know what's cool it's that rolex did with zenith and everything mm -hmm. like that that would be obviously as as time has gone on, these wa these houses basically have, I don't want to say collapsed on themselves, that's a bad thing, but basically looked in on themselves mm -hmm. and were like, we'll do this in-house for this reason. Mm -hmm. And it became, well, now you're not a real watchmaker if you don't make your movements in-house. Yes. Which, okay, I get that, which is cool. But wouldn't it be so cool if this was one of the few hobbies where there were like those crazy things, those crazy collaborations, and it does happen with off-brands or different brands or something like that. Like the... Ralph Lauren that you have in the shop right now yes. uses a PSA PSA movement. Yep. But wouldn't it be so cool still if it was like instead of seeing an ad for a reverso or an ad for an AP, you saw an ad kind of from both brands being like, we did the inside, they did the outside. Yeah. That would be a different world. That would be really interesting. I you know that would be really interesting. Like imagine a video of Cartier talking and then they cut to JLC who does like the movement technology and I it cuts know. back to the elegance. I know. That's so, obviously it, everything's changed from then on. I, I guess Cartier is a horrible example, but everything has changed to the point where now it's like not that culture. Yeah. But, but it's like- Even those brands never, never, I don't think they used it as part of their marketing. No, no, they yeah, never did. Yeah. But that I'm saying like oh, that kind of culture would be, cra it'd be like, you can buy this Chevy with a Mustang engine, and both yeah. brands are talking about it. You're like, yeah, wow. Right. Yeah. doesn't help for selling and making money, but right. it'd be cool. Anyways, though, this this watch, or this movement, rather, was used in the Paddock 3700 1A. Yep. Was used in the Royal Oak 5402 ST mm -hmm. and the VC222. It's amazing. So if you look at this lineup, these are all the most... Yeah, three of the most iconic, you know... Watches, watches of all time. time. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's and unbelievable. I was reading this article. I couldn't find all of the information about it, but I think the 920 base was used in the AP Perpetual. Oh, interesting. And at the time, there was around a thousand Perpetual calendars being made in Switzerland. And when AP was using that movement, they were accounting for almost half. Wow. Yeah. How amazing. Different world. Yeah. It's like when you world. say Cartier made like 20 tanks. Yeah, well, they, yeah, that's right. It, it, you, you, it's hard to even imagine when the when the luxury when the luxury watch world was like that. Yeah, right. When Cartier made eleven tanks in a year, seven tanks in a year. When Audemars Piguet was using JLC movements, you know, it's yeah. just it sounds like such a foreign concept, but it really is the 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 root of kind of the you know of of of, of the uh, of our history as as watch lovers, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then the reason that I think that 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 stopped the. Re <laughs> The reason it stopped is because the brands got richer. Of course. And the brands were able to expand their manufacturing process and mm -hmm. were able to make their own movements. That's great. Yeah. Then, uh, even when they weren't, like up to not that recently, AP was using a, you know this modular, you know, non-integrated chronograph into their Royal Oak, you know, whatever. they would not educate, you know, buyers about about that. They would not talk to buyers. It's a harder sell. It's a harder sell. Yeah. They kind of were of the philosophy of, you know, luxury buyers are like mushrooms, you know, feed them shit and keep them in the dark. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a departed quote. Um, <laughs> Have you seen The Departed? <laughs> one time in high school. <laughs> yeah. The most, inter well, maybe not the most interesting thing, but one of the interesting things is with this movement being so famous, mm -hmm. JLC has never used it themselves. Is it that was sold, true? It's sold like an ETA movement where it's like, oh, it's, wow. You'd think some crazy watch could be made from that. Like, we have a film we've talked about many times who's never made yeah. for the brand you know, I'm talking about. Yes. Same concept. Like, take that yeah. and bring it home. Wow. Case that's it really how you want. I know. I think that's fascinating. Space, dude. dude I saw so Space. <laughs> You say the moon. The moon. You're familiar. I'm familiar with the moon, yeah. This uh, also a special thank you to, I think it's Jens, J-E-N-S. Special thank you over at Watch Time. You, I, I read a lot about this stuff from you. I don't want to leave you out. But anyways, we'll go over some of the watches in space. Some of them you probably know, some you don't. And then, um, you know, there's a Rolex in there. All right. Really? I had no idea Rolex made it to the moon. I think it's hysterical right. because really, obviously, Omega made it to the moon, clearly. NASA signed with Omega, clearly all this stuff. 
But at the end of the day, you're like, oh yeah, these are just a bunch of like bros, no. like engineer bros that are like, well, I want to, I'll just wear my watch if it yeah. blows up, which won't happen because I'm an engineer. Right. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I think that I thought that was fascinating because you forget they're they're just people. They're not NASA. So these are unofficial, unofficial moon watches. Yeah, although personal some of them, I shouldn't say that for some of them, like this Fortis, the first one is. Um, that was the watch that Russia. Wore. I forgot that it's not only us that have like been to space. So when you just said Russia, I was like, "That's not real." You're like, "No, yeah, you're right." It, well, I shouldn't say space. I shouldn't say moon. I should say space and moon. Right. Very, very different level there. Okay. I guess worn on the moon is right. what Omega holds, but right. not in space. The moon watch. The moon. <laughs> Familiar. Bingo. Bingo. So anyway, <laughs> first thing what we're looking at is Fortis, who recently, or not so recently, they did a Mars watch. I, I remember that. And. I think by the time we're landing on Mars, we probably, you know, it's all for show at that point. Yeah, I think it's kind of cute. It's like, what was it? it? This will be the first watch on Mars. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. I'm sure Omega will... I don't believe I'm you. I'm sure Omega will probably... Yeah, be also the first watch on Mars. Yeah. Exactly. The funniest part, though, anyways, though, this is used by Russia's Roscosmos... Roscosmos mm. State Corporation for Space Activities. Mouthful. The original one was supposed to be an art piece, a 38 millimeter chronograph from 1994 interesting and then it went to space and worked how bizarre like, how bizarre is that using a Lamania 5100 movement um, but what's interesting or funny is this really plays into the stereotype at one point when a Russian cosmonaut forgot his tools he used his Fortis as a hammer that's cool yeah right I like that and if it kept working that's fantastic if it yeah. didn't still but yeah that's cool yeah next up we have Zinn chronograph 142 I'm actually surprised that worked as a hammer yeah what do you like mean like the fact that it didn't break the movement like that's shock oh well I don't uh, know if it broke the movement oh I'm that sure. that part wasn't yeah. important I mean it would only break the balance I guess it would break the balance in theory unless it was that shock resistant I mean which is possible I also don't know I feel like a hammer is not that small a hammer a hammer head a head of a hammer well, he didn't attach it to anything. You do it for way too long. <laughs> oh, take a bite. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know what he was hammering, but I can't imagine. Even a pretty large watch has nothing on a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> like, tell that to all the pictures hung in my house. <laughs> Anyways, next up is Zen. I feel like Zen is perfect. This is the Chronograph 142. This has been in space. Zen. I love their watches. I think they're beautiful. To me, like, a Zinn watch is, like, the dumb ogre watch that doesn't care where... It, like, it's in space. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, my God, you made it to space, Zinn. And it's like, okay. Well, I had no idea Zinn had ever been to space. It's because I guess it's really not something you can market that heavily unless... I feel like they totally the could. I think that they're wasting a great opportunity to market something, and that's a Zinn. That's a <laughs> Like a Zinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, anyways, German astronaut and physicist Reinhard Furrer wore his special, wore his personal black PVD 140S. You got the sillies over there? No, I'm just imagine his Twitter name like Zafur. <laughs> like, <laughs> the f Zin is. We've talked about them before. They do everything to the most intense degree. We talk about like their gas-filled watches that you can actually see underwater. Yes. They don't get obstructed. Which very cool. Very cool. Yep, I love them. Next up, the Pogue. You remember this? Uh, yeah, I remember that this watch had been to space. Was it the first automatic chronograph in space? First automatic chronograph, I believe in general, um. then went to space. This is not called the Pogue, by the way. It is named the Pogue by the general audience because mm -hmm. William Reed Bill, Bill, Pogue wore it. Oh, yeah. That's fine. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's actually called the Seiko Speed Timer 6139-6009. It's a phenomenal. It's not a mouthful at all. No. Definitely, there's no better name that could possibly yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a, it's a very unique, very odd watch. Yeah, if it's If you've funky. ever had a Pogue, you yes. know it's it's very weird. Yep. And they're very cool. They're very funky watches. Very cool. Next up, this is not a funky watch, but the band. I just wanted to show it to you really quick. This is a Hoyer Stop Watch 2915 personal watch by... Get the John Glenn, the first American to orbit the, orbit the moon? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wait, you didn't know that he did that or you didn't know I he I didn't wore? know he wore a, a Hoyer. Fastened to his, to him by rubber band. Really? I don't know what this is. I, that's why I brought it up. It looks like, like gauze. It's a canvas or something. But Wow. I know. Fascinating, right? Wow. Also weird. Of or, all the why, what a bizarre I was gonna say, choice. This, this went out of style after like World War One. 
Yeah. People stop putting their stopwatches yeah. or their yeah their stopwatches on their wrists and their watches. So I thought that was odd. I think I the guess band super is super legible. I mean, it's like, you know. My thought was super legible. It's a specific stopwatch, so I guess you could see everything yep. right away. But also, maybe he's just a watch guy, and he's like, "This is, yeah, this is my watch. watch. I want to bring yeah. it to space." Oh wow, how interesting! And then finally, the GMT Master. I like sixty-five forty-two. I don't know. I couldn't find the model. Oh, this okay. is the picture well, that they used for there? reference. Pretty... 72. Oh, 72. Okay, so that would have been a 1675. Wow. Wow, how interesting. I mean, Waggy, unless right? they used an older one. That's, wow. Who did it? Alan Shepard, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, and Eugene Cernan. And Ronald Evans. Ronald Evans brought it. this model with him on the last crew movie. So Ronald Evans. Ron Evans. And James Lovell, the most famous man. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. He was, there was no pictures of him in space wearing the GMT mask. Mm-hmm. But every picture that NASA has of him, he is wearing his Rolex. Interesting. Fascinating, right? Wow. So Omega has the first on the moon, everything like that. But when you look at, oh, there's a ton of other brands. But Rolex was, but Rolex has been up and down out of the earth plenty of times. Wow, I had no idea. That and is so interesting. This is just the one that I picked because this is the one that was kind of highlighted. But there were turnographs that went to the moon, like the old ones with the so actual bezels. that Rolex wouldn't really brand speak to that more, right? Well, because how, I guess, how do you at that point? We didn't get there first, but we do go there. Well, Rolex doesn't really do taglines. I don't mean tagline. I just mean in terms of like, like how do you sell that? Just alongside? Well, I guess it really goes to they don't need to sell it because they sell so many watches. They're fine. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I would definitely reference it in my, you know, in, 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 the, in the brand. Like when you go on Rolex.com and go into a particular watch, there is brand speak about the watch. Developed for pilots, you know, but... Even even if they, uh, they didn't put any brand speak, but they just had like a guy's arm like this holding a um, pole, you could yeah. tell, like with the yeah. earth in the back. Fucking nuts. Yeah. What is wow, the... Um, very cool. What's the, what's the time difference on the moon? What's the time zone there? What's the time zone there? Every time I'm in Florida, I call Sally and I'm like, she's like, oh, how you doing? I'm like, oh, it's good. What time is it home? What time? I gotta get home. What like, time? It's it's Eastern Standard. It's the same thing. I was like, no, no, I, I'm in no, Florida. No, no. Maybe you forgot. I'm a, baby, I'm in Florida. Baby, I'm in Florida. Baby, I'm in Florida. Maybe you forgot it. Did. All right. Before we continue in this conversation, a quick message from our friends over at Stamps.com. January is off to a very very fast start. The year is flying by. Yes. If you have a small business. You need to make sure you're getting the best rate on postage. It's not only the best rate which Stamps.com offers, but just the most convenient. You use Stamps.com. Oh, I've been, Theo and Harris has been using Stamps.com to ship things for the last couple of years, and it has literally been a life saver or you know game changer for us. It's much more efficient and quick. The website is so much faster than the other shipping services that we use. I know that sounds like a stupid little note, but you don't know how slow some of these other competing websites are. It's wow, amazing. Really? Um, yeah, you literally to get develop the develop the label incredibly quickly, print it out, boom, you have a scale right at your desk. Everything that comes is, free. It comes free. Boom. Literally amazing. I could not recommend stamps.com more. The only person that could rent, recommend it more than me is my mother. And she does. Because it's Viciously. Viciously. Honey, you gotta get stamps. You gotta do get- you, do you ever heard of stamps.com? Oh my God. My mom runs the Theo and Harris office. So she does all of our accounting and all of our shipping and all that customer service, etc. Many of you guys probably know her if you've ordered stuff from theoandharris.com. Uh, and she literally would die for stamps.com. Done. Oh my God. Use stamps.com. Literally no question. Uh, financially, efficiently, uh, efficiency wise, no brainer. I don't know what else you want to talk about, but Theo and Harris would not be a, a pleasure if it weren't for stamps.com. And everyone knows that like, you know, again, the, they beat the prices, but even like, even just on the peace of mind, even just on the reliability and the, and the ease of use, that's what you want in a business. You want you want services that you use that just take you know a load off your back and that can you know that can carry their own weight and help you be successful. Um, because you know, there's really you really don't have the patience or the time or the energy for anything else but that. All right, so if that interested you at all, which it definitely should, if you are running a small business, you need to do it basically immediately. And you can by signing up at stamps.com slash Theo and Harris to get a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts either. Terrific, I highly recommend you guys go over and do it. And that's it, stamps.com. Finally. Yes. This is the weirdest combination of brands I've seen. Cartier, Omega. With what and when? 
This right here. This went to the moon? No, that didn't go to the moon. This is just a separate note. Oh, it's like, that looks that's incredible. That's like if I went to the moon. It's <laughs> from the 30s. No, I just think this is one of the weirdest ones I've seen. I've the never seen Omega it. Marine is a very yeah. famous yeah, watch, yeah, yeah. the first dive watch Retailed ever. Retailed by Cartier. Retailed by Cartier. This is an Omega Marine with a Cartier stamp on it. Wow, how interesting. Not a Cartier stamp under it or anything right. like that. Yeah, retailed by. Yeah. That is, to me, and that will kind of finish up our conversation with like, using calibers and stuff like that that to me that is literally the definition of well we just put our name on it and we'll sell it oh yeah yeah but brands did that though they that's what's so that. crazy they actually did that that isn't a cartier that isn't an omega movement that is an omega watch, watch with a cartier an logo entire omega and watch. i would think that's fake i'd be like oh someone put a fake dial on yeah right omega. yeah like, that's right a really of course cool yeah omega. you'd be like that nah, something's wrong here isn't that fascinating that's so interesting yeah wow that cleaned up i feel like would Phenomenal. be a grail oh yeah for the, you, well, you've always wanted an Omega I've Marine. always wanted an Omega Marine. That's the first ever dive watch. It was fastened with, like, leather. Like, a leather was the gasket with, like, uh, horse glue. Or, you know, glue made from a horse or whatever. Right. It's so weird. <laughs> it's just like hysterical. That. So weird. And people were diving with it. And it's like, that watch is cool enough. But if there's one stamped Cartier, yeah, it's nuts. that is the weirdest watch I've ever heard of. Because yeah. Cartier doesn't even do dive. Yeah, they don't right. do that. They do right. luxury. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Wow, how interesting. All right? Hey, did you like the new Cartier Tank Francais? No, I didn't. Never mind. We'll talk about a different day. Did you see the one on White Lotus? The season one? Yeah. Did you like it? On the guy? Remember. On the uh, manager? I love that watch. Uh, no, I just, I, I've never seen... I don't see him like that often. Oh, yeah. In, in films and stuff. And I was like... That looks fantastic. The entire series has phenomenal watches. He has a... In season two, you see season two? I didn't see season two. Oh, the one character Mary wears a f- Smurf. Phenomenal. Another character wears a rose gold oh. Panerai. Like, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. the watch placement was genius. Like, Michael Imperioli's character would wear the rose gold Panerai. The massive... Yes, 100%. I did see that. We'll talk about White Lotus at different times. This is a great full subject. We can talk about White Lotus for like an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the only thing, though, with the manager, I was like, he's got to be kind of rolling in it. Or he has horrible spending habits if he's wearing a solid gold Cartier tank. Oh, yeah. Solid gold, baby. Yeah. He's not doing too bad. I was like, you're, you're doing pretty well to be so upset about this. Yeah. Anyways, though, that's about it. Stay tuned for uh, a blooper of us laughing for five minutes about uh, being shirtless. Yeah. <laughs> it's more podcast stuff. Yeah, it's much more fun. <laughs> Space is, like, picture the biggest thing in your Space. head. Space. It's exciting. Space. We- and Kamala Harris. Oh, really? Yeah. You ever see the video? No. Oh, I have a great onion video for you. It's like this little kid. It's like he's like seven. And he's like, my name's Michael George. And I'm a speechwriter for Kamala Harris. And he's because <laughs> he's what? like, I got the idea for this one. And it's like, it's, you know, space is exciting. He goes, because I was thinking about space and how exciting it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they're talking about like school buses. Don't you just love a school bus? Stupid f***ing shit. You've always... And he's like, I love school buses. So that's kind of how I thought of that line. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've always been a huge fan of the onion. You've yeah. gone, so, gone so far as to make fake onion articles for your lovers. Yeah, yes, yes. I uh, I, I love the onion. Uh, I loved it. Babylon B is now very, very big. Um, I, I love that you love Perry. Do you know oh, Clickle? Cl- yeah, I've heard of I Clickle. I think Clickle is so yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you know, some of, like, especially the onion, like, years ago, like, their YouTube like they had some bri- like like significantly better than SNL almost has ever been. <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy. Have you heard <laughs> the Onion podcast about the murders? No. Uh, I won't Is spoil anything for you. Uh, uh, the one joke that got me, which doesn't spoil anything, <laughs> is it's it's spoofing on a classic murder podcast, mm-hmm. being like. Jenny was a good girl, like da da da, like yeah, yeah. interviewing people, like I don't know what happened, but say the girl's name is Jenny. The podcaster is interviewing the mother, and they're talking, and then they go, <laughs> we get a brief sponsor from you know this bag company, say it's Bagu or whatever, and they're like, you know what, Mrs. Jenny, how about you read it? And she's like, okay, <laughs> she has to read the sponsor. And she's, she's like crying, <laughs> and she's like. Bag who has the best bags in the world. Oh, that's There's 10 great. ounce cotton canvas. She goes through it yeah. all. And at the end, and she goes, um, and there's a special deal today. You could use my promo code, Jenny, to save 15%. <laughs> 